Now I want to go through the theories behind the epileptic seizures. And th there's one drug that we can thank a lot that the whole epileptology science was started out and it's penicillin. It's penicillin. And you know why? You know, penicillin at the end of the world saved many, many millions of people until now. But it also started a science aiming for epilepsy and the reason is that at the end of the war you know when there were like head traumas they said oh we're having this great drug over here it kills the bacteria so let's let's put it into brain and they did this the, the surgeons you know with the cranial traumas and then later on the soldiers that came from the war suddenly they started to have epilepsy and it was a breakout of epilepsy and they didn't know what happened. And then they found out that it was thanks to penicillin. So, but remember, penicillin, if you put it into the blood and your brain blood barrier is totally fine, you don't have to worry about that. But if you put the crystals of penicillin directly on brain, you will make a uh, epileptic focus, okay? And so thanks to this, they started to you know, use rats and cats or whatever, and they were opening their brains and putting penicillin there. And then finally they could study focal epilepsy. Yeah? And what happens, uh, if I will remind you, if this is a neuron, and here are, let's say, like three neurons ending. One, two, and three, like, like those are axons of other neurons. And let's say the, the, the blue ones are EPSPs. So let, let's say one and two EPSP. So that's excitatory postsynaptic potential. And this one is inhibitory postsynaptic potential, okay? And you know how it works with, with the, if, if over here we're gonna have a normal neuron and here is a 70 millivolts and now where you get 50 millivolts. So now the first um, first EPSP will uh, act on the neuron. So what happens is it will jump like this. Then impulse from a inhibitory. So so you're going to lower for a second the, the 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 normal potential. And now suddenly if the bursts come from one and two together. You're gonna go boom and boom over the treasure and now you send an action potential. So this is the way how it should work in a way, yeah? But in case you put a penicillin there, somehow it's toxic. And in what and, and now we're talking about the epileptogenesis in a way. So this direct toxic effect of penicillin somehow impairs the membrane. It impairs the cellular membrane and suddenly it, it's not responding with one action potential. But what will it do is you will depolarize it. Now it will send a burst like, I don't know, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, action potentials like that. Then there is a plateau and then when, when it again falls down. The... So over here, this is a normal neuron and this is a epileptic neuron. Okay. And this reaction you call paroxysmal depolarizing shift, PDS. And this is one of the theories, and we know now that some neurons in some epilepsies react like this. So instead of reacting with one action potential, they react with PDS. So they are sort of more excited, overacting, okay? So remember, with PDS, they are overacting, and they shoot like hell. And the problem is not one neuron, it's okay, too good. 
But imagine you're having one neuron shooting like hell with PDS like this, but it ends on two neurons. Okay? And sooner or later, if this one shoots PDS all the time, this one's going to change very soon as well. And this one's going to control all of them. And once you have like thousand synchronous neurons shooting like this with the PDS, you call it epileptic aggregate. Okay. Yep. The aggregate is already a focus that can trigger epilepsy. So this, this is one of the mechanisms that epilepsy can be triggered or started, okay? With the PDS and a, let's say, malfunction of the cell membrane. So it's the one with the change within neuron, yeah? And this is like induced, but we know that there are genetic problems. You can have an inherited mutation of channels that will respond the same way or very similar in way, in analogy. And those are families which inherited these type of mutations, okay? So that's one of the theories within the neuron. But then another one is a theory within a network. And this was a paper which isn't so old in a way, not such an old paper. And they did an experiment with rat puppies, okay? And this is a hippocampus of a rat. And maybe you can tell these cells, these are pyramidal cells, okay? Yeah. And this is a, basically you can put CA1, CA3 here, cornu amones that means. And what is important is here, these are neurons. And this layer you call granule cell layer. And what is even more important is a layer below there, there are cells, and you call it subgranular, subgranular layer. And you know what? There is a generation of new neurons in this, this region, okay? And basically in a rat, we know that there are neuronal stem cells over here, neuronal stem cells, and they're producing every day like 9,000 new neurons that are migrating over here into the granular layer. And basically we know that 50% will survive and stay in the granular layer. So there's a de novo production of new neurons, maybe for new memories very likely, okay? The same works with humans. And you know how is the hippocampus? These cells, they send axons over here and these pyramidal cells then send it somewhere to the CA1. And again, this sends it wherever. Okay. And this is the right order it should go. But what they found out is that they just overheated the, the brain a bit. Overheat. So, so of the puppies, the very young brains. And they found out that there's a misplacement. And instead of that, the new cells, instead of migrating here, they start to migrate somewhere over here, if you overheat the brain, and they rewire in a very weird way. They make a mess of wiring over here. And again, this is, this is the problem of the network, which is bad. It's not rightly connected. There's a mess up of the connections, and this again generates seizures. So again, epileptogenesis, and they ended with seizures. And why am I talking about this hippocampus again? Well, this is a problem of network. And typically there are combinations. There could be a mutation of a channel and a network problem. And why am I saying this is, well, I told you, the most common seizures we have in humans are the medium temporal lobe epilepsies, okay? And these are like 60% of all seizures, seizures. And why am I talking about these overheated puppies? Well, because maybe you know what happens to children when they're very small. And it, it could have happened to you as well. When you were very small, you had a fever, high fever, 
You had a febrile seizure, remember? And although we say to parents, don't worry, it's not epilepsy, whatever, very likely there is a connection. This experiment confirms it, and you know what? Also, the data from humans confirm it. Because many, many people have febrile seizures and only just small percentage will have a temporal lobe epilepsy. But if you revert this and ask the people who have medial temporal epilepsy, two thirds had febrile seizures. Okay, so please, from today, remember febrile seizure is very much connected with temporal lobe epilepsy. Although we don't know if maybe it's a predisposition thanks to the bad networking of the brain. That's why the children have febrile seizures. But there is an obvious connection between these two. So, thank you very much. So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.